In today's video, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to create ourselves a food face. Now what a food face is, is basically getting individual items of food and making a bit of a collage by joining those pieces of food together. So this is a good example right here of how a food face could look. Okay, find another good example if you scroll down. That's another pretty cool one there. Okay, and what I've done is I've gone onto Google Images and I found a whole stack of different fruit and veggies to use for our food face. Now there's plenty I've left out, so if you want to get onto Google Images and find some more pieces of fruit and veggies to include in your face, that's fine as well. Okay, but this is a pretty good collection here and you should be able to make some pretty cool faces just out of this um, batch of food, food right here. Okay, so to get started, head over to Photoshop and you need to open up all the bits of food that you'd like to include in your food face. Okay, so you can see across the top here with all these tabs of all the different pieces of food I plan on using. Okay, if you want to open up some more food a bit later on because you think you want to add more to your food face, that's fine. Okay, you can do that as well. But just open up all the bits you think you might need for now. Okay, you can always scrap them or add more later on. Now I want to go back to my watermelon because this is going to be my face. It's nice and round and it's big and got plenty of room for me to add plenty of detail to it. Alright. So the first thing I want to do to my watermelon is rotate it around so it's on its side. So the way we do that in Photoshop is head up to the image menu, go to image rotation and just swing it around 90 degrees. Okay, and that looks a bit more like an oval now, as we'd expect a face to look like. One thing that is bothering me though is the shadow down the left hand side here that is that was underneath the watermelon, now it's on its side. We do need to get rid of that. Okay, so there's a bit of a trick to that. What we need to do is select this white area, this background outside of the watermelon, and just delete it. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do here. First of all, go to your layers panel over here on the right hand side. And you can see you've got a background layer which has your watermelon on it. Just hit the little padlock next to that to unlock it. And you'll see its name changes to layer zero. I'm just going to rename that by double clicking on layer zero and just writing in watermelon. I'm then going to make a new layer that's going to sit underneath this one. And the way we make a new layer is we go down next to the trash can, hit that little square with a folded corner. And you can see a new layer appears called layer one. I want you to double click on that and just call it background. And what we're going to do is just move that down below the watermelon. So pick it up and just drag it down below the watermelon. All right. Now back on the watermelon layer here, just go back and click on it. We're going to cut out the watermelon and separate it from its background. So in your toolbox down the left hand side here, I want you to grab the fourth tool down called the Quick Selection Tool. And up the top, you've got some little brushes up here. Make sure you've got the middle one selected with a little plus sign above it. And that's going to allow us to select certain parts of this image. Okay, and the quick selection tool works pretty easily. All you need to do is you just need to click and drag. And Photoshop will start selecting similar colors. Okay, you can go all the way around that watermelon until you get that whole background selected now. Once you've got it selected, simply press delete. Okay, and you can press Control D. We can go up to select and deselect to get rid of those little marching ants. And this is what you're left with. Now when you see a checkered background like this, that's not, not actually a color. That just means that we've got a transparent background now. Okay, it's Photoshop's way of telling you we've got a transparent background. But I actually want to color that background in white. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back and click on this background layer. And I'm going to go down and find my fill bucket tool. Okay. Oh, sorry, paint bucket tool it's called. It might be hiding underneath the gradient tool here. So you just hold your mouse down on it and grab your paint bucket tool. Ensure your color here, this little top box, the foreground color. You just need to click on it and set it to white. Click OK and then just click in your background. Okay, and you get a nice white background now. And you can even see in your layers panel over here, the background's white. And then you've got your watermelon sitting above it. Okay, so that's looking good. That's a good start. Next thing we need to do is bring in some other pieces of fruit now to make our collage work. Alright, so let's start with the passion fruit. The passion fruit I'm going to use as the eyes. So I'm just going to select this one that's been cut open. So again, to select it, I'm going to go down to my quick selection tool. I'm going to ensure that I've got the plus brush selected up the top, so I'm selecting things. Then I'm just going to click and drag over the top of the passion fruit until it's all pretty much selected. 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now if you select too much by mistake, just watch what happens here if I drag across a bit too far. And you've now got, I'll just zoom in here, some marching in ants that extend across to the second passion fruit. Okay, there's a quick way to get rid of this. Up the top, with the little brushes, hit the one with the negative symbol, or the minus sign. And what that says is basically deselect anything that's currently selected. So I just run my mouse over the top of what I just selected by mistake. And Photoshop deselects it. And there we go. That looks pretty good. So I've got my passion fruit selected, ready to go onto my watermelon. Okay, so you just need to go to edit and copy. or we'll press Control C for the shortcut. Go back to your watermelon. Go to edit paste or we'll press Control V. And your water, uh, sorry, your passion fruit comes in on top of the watermelon. Now holding Shift, resize your little piece, uh, little passion fruit down to the size of an eye. Now to resize, you need to make sure you've got a few things selected. I'll just show you. I'll do mine quickly there. You need to have this Move tool selected. Okay, it's the first one in your toolbox. You need Auto Select checked, and you need Show Transform Controls checked. Okay, if you don't have those two boxes selected, you won't be able to resize your passion fruit easily. Okay, you need to have those boxes selected. So once they're selected, you should be able to see this little bounding box around the outside of the passion fruit, which will let you resize it. Make sure you hold Shift when you resize it, so you don't deform your passion fruit. If you don't hold Shift, it might end up looking squished like that, or too fat like that. That's not what we want. Okay, so you just hold Shift, resize it to an appropriate size, and press the tick at the top to apply those changes. Okay, now what you can do here to copy and paste that quickly, is with your Move tool selected, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, the one next to the space bar. And you'll see that your mouse cursor changes to a little black arrow and a white arrow. And if you click and drag across, you get a second passion fruit. You could also copy and paste. Okay, that's another quick way of doing it. So there's a few ways you can get the two eyes put in. Okay, so just move them around and position them somewhere in an appropriate spot on the watermelon. After that, I'm going to use the eggplant to do the nose. So using my quick selection tool again, make sure you've got the little plus symbol selected up the top, and just simply run your mouse over the top of the eggplant until it's all selected. Once it's selected, press Control C to copy, or go to Edit and Copy. Go back to your watermelon tab, and paste it in. Okay, grab your Move tool again, making sure the Show Transform controls are selected and you can just resize it. Remember to hold Shift when you do this, so you don't deform it. Press the tick at the top to apply the changes, and you should have a little nose now sitting on your watermelon. Now for the smile, I'm going to use a rock melon. Um, let's see if I've got it, there it is. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool again. Now I can make my brush a bit bigger, the size of my selection tool by changing the size. Another way to make the size of your brush bigger and smaller is using the square brackets. That's next to the letter P on your keyboard. The left square bracket makes it smaller, the right square bracket makes it bigger. Okay, so you can select more in one go. I'm not going to worry about the little jagged edges there on the um, rock melon that aren't quite selected. Okay, you can go and select them individually if you want to, but I'm not going to worry. I don't think it's going to affect my smile too much. Alright, so once you've got the rock melon selected and it's looking good, Simply copy it, head back over to your watermelon, and we're going to paste it in. Now this one comes out massive. Okay, so you might need to hold down Alt on your keyboard and just scroll on your mouse so you zoom out a bit. Okay, and remember to hold down Shift to resize it. You want to try and get that watermelon looking pretty good, as if it was a smile. Something like that it doesn't look too bad. So hit the tick at the top when you're done with your little smile. Okay, a little bit lopsided this face, but it's looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing you might do, blueberries, I'm going to use as the pupils on the eye. So these are a quick one. Just um, use your quick selection tool to select any one of those. I'm pressing Control c to copy, Control v to paste. I'm using my Move tool in my toolbox, I'm able to resize this down to the size of a pupil for the eye. 
a little bit smaller wouldn't hurt. Press the tick at the top when you're done. Okay, remember you can press Control C to copy and Control V to paste if you want to put a second one in. So, yeah, that looks pretty good like that. Ah, oh, what else have we got? We've got a banana here. Um, what is the banana for? Some eyelashes? Ah, uh, not eyelashes, eyebrows. So let's grab our quick selection tool, run it over the top of the banana. Okay, and be carefully that it doesn't select any of the shadow down the bottom. Sometimes it can. So you might have to deselect a little bit of the shadow. When you're good to go, copy it, paste it, resize it using your move tool. And we're going to have to swing it around now to get it up the right way. So the way we rotate things in Photoshop is making sure we've got our move tool selected and you can see this bounding box around our banana. You just need to hover off one of the corners. Okay, don't hover on it because it won't work, but when you ho <coughs> hover just off one of those bananas or corners, your mouse will change into some curly arrows and it will lead to pick it up, rotate it around and then get it into position. Probably still a little bit big, so I'll make it a bit smaller. Something like that looks good, so I'll press the tick at the top and there's my little eyebrow stuck in there. I'll copy and paste that in again. Now if you want you can flip this horizontally or mirror how it looks by simply selecting it and going to the edit menu, transform and flip horizontal. That just flips our banana around the other way so it's like a mirror image of the other one. Okay so the eyebrows look pretty sweet. Uh, what else have we got to work with here? Some avocados can be used for the ears. Alright, so let's select using a little plus sign up the top there. I'm going to select this one here on the right without the seed in it. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Again, holding Shift to resize, and then rotating it around. I'm going to get it into a good position. Something like that looks good. I'll press the tick. Now, I think this would look better if the avocado was actually behind the watermelon. And there's a way we can do that. In our layers over here, okay, we need to find which layer this avocado is on. And as I select it with my mouse, I can see it's on layer 8. So I might even rename that. I'll just call it Avo. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that layer down until I see the watermelon layer. And I'm just going to put it one behind the watermelon. Okay, so there's my watermelon there above my avocado, which is now behind it. Okay, so that's the really handy thing you can do with layers. You can rearrange how everything looks and what position they're in on the page. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. I'm going to copy and paste that avocado in again. Oops. Paste it right behind it, so I might hold down Alt and just drag it off. And I'm going to rotate this one. Actually, I won't rotate it, I'll just flip it. So I'll go to Edit, Transform, and just flip it horizontally. And you can see he's already behind the watermelon, so there's no need to change him. That's looking pretty good. Now coming off those ears, I might put in some um, little earrings. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some cherries. Okay, so here they are here. These ones are going to be a bit harder to select because they're two cherries joined together. So where's the quick selection tool? There it is. I'll try and grab this one on the left to start with. I need to make my selection tool nice and small as I go up the stem here. So make it tiny so it fits inside that stem. Carefully go and select the stem. If you want, you can get a little bit of the brown up there too. I might leave it out though. And you can see down the bottom of the cherry, it's selected a bit of the shadow. So we just need to grab our minus brush and deselect some of that. That's actually looking pretty good. So I'll copy that by pressing Control C and then Control V to paste. Give it a resize. And go and whack some cherries on the ears. Okay. And remember to flip this horizontally. So edit, transform, flip horizontal. And now I've got a mirror image on the other side. Okay, so we've got some earrings in there looking good. Uh, what have I got left up here to work with? I've got the pineapple left, I think, and that's for my hair. Okay, I'm not going to use the whole pineapple for the hair. I just want this top green bit, the spiky part. So what I'm going to do is just select that using my quick selection tool. Grab the selection option and just run it over the top of the green section. Okay, I'm not worrying about the orange down below. 
Alright, so that's looking mostly selected. I think it's enough. So I'll press Ctrl C to copy. And on my watermelon, I'm going to paste it in. Now we've got a bit of an issue here. Okay, we've got our watermelon pretty close to the top of the page. Okay, I'd like a little bit more room so they can actually see um, the haircut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that bit of hair for the minute. I'm going to make my canvas a bit bigger. The way we do that is we go to the image menu up the top and change the canvas size. Alright, what I'm going to push is this little bottom arrow down here so it pushes everything up. We're going to make it a bit taller. Its current height is 800. Let's make it about, uh, we'll go 1200. You can always chop bits off if it's no good. And we'll click OK. And what that's done now is extended our canvas up a bit higher. We just need to colour that in white using our paint bucket tool so that it matches the rest of the background. So in my layers, I'm going to go back and click on the background now and just fill that in white. So my background now extends all the way up. Alright, with that done, I can then go back and copy this haircut part again, paste it in, and use my move tool to position it on top of his head. Now it's a bit big, so I'll hold shift and bring it down to a reasonable size. Okay, and press the tick when I'm done. That's looking pretty good. Looks like a mohawk. If you want, you can duplicate it, so you can copy and paste a few of these out there. Give them a bit of a rotate so they match the shape of his head. I'm just going to transform that one by flicking it horizontally to get another one out the side there. Okay, that's looking pretty good for a haircut. You could always add more if you wanted to. The last thing we need to do now is just crop out the bits we don't need. You can, as you can see, we've got a bit of white space up the top here and a little bit down the side that we're not using, so we might chop that off. So the crop tool sits in our toolbox just here. One, two, three, the fifth one down, one, two, three, four. Yeah, the fifth tool down is the crop tool. And when you click it, a bounding box appears around the outside of the page. You just need to resize it a little bit. So that it suits. I guess you could have drawn a beard or something on your fruit face if you wanted to. Uh, I just want to crop up a little bit of this side. Don't know if it's going to let me. Oh yeah, there we go. Alright. So we've got a pretty decent looking food face now. Last thing I get to do is just grab the text tool, which is the letter T. Now at the top, actually you've got a dark colour like black. And choose a font that's going to stand out and just write your name on the page so I know who did it. Because we're going to print these out and stick them up on the classroom wall. So I'll just put this debate up down the bottom there. That's my name. So now I can save that up and print it out. Okay. To save this up, what I want you to do is go to the file menu when you're done and go to save as. Now if you want to come back and edit this, you would leave it as a PSD or a Photoshop document file. That will keep all of our layers intact and allow you to come back and rearrange them, delete some if you wanted to. Um, and it won't affect the image in too much of a bad way. Okay, it's called non-destructive um, editing, that one. What we can do though, if we're fully finished and we know we're not going to change it anymore, so we're going to save it as a JPEG file. Okay, and I just want you to call it food face. I'll just call it example food face. And once you've got JPEG as the file type, click on save. And a little box will pop up asking you what sort of quality do you want to save it as. I like to go around 8, 9 or 10. Okay, size 8 will probably do for this one and you can click OK. And that will save your image into your account at a pretty high quality, and that will be ready for some printing. All right, so that's how you make a food face in Photoshop, and how you use the selection tool to select things, and cut and paste them out, put them all together to make a bit of a collage. Okay, hopefully you understood how the layers work as well. You can move things up and down, remember? Okay, and different things will appear on top of other things. Whatever's at the top of the layers box, will appear on top of the picture. Whatever's at the bottom will appear at the bottom of the picture. Alrighty, so that's it from me. I'll see you in the next video.